Welcome back, everybody. Before we go on with our Ruby on Rails migration, let's step back and uh, see what our, when we typed in Rails, generate model, user, name, string, email, what that gave us. Um, if you look in your application, you see that uh, in the user, it gave us it created for us um, the string and the name just like we specified down here. Down here. So you see how that matches that, our name and our string. Okay. And also let's take a look at the uh, database, the create user that that created for us. Let's give you the whole view right here. And here's our migration. And when we type in our um, execute rake db migrate, this is what's going to um, activate, per se. Because what our migration does is it, it actually creates the database for us. Because um, uh, although we created the, um, the class for it, Let's just say that the, the migration will uh, make everything for us again. Uh, what I'm using to look at the database is an application called uh, SQLite Database Browser. You can Google that. Um, if I try to open it up right now, it won't be able to open up anything. I'll show you. Documents, Desktop, One, Diamond, Application, oops, you know, our database. Uh, here, to, here's my SQL right here. Development SQL three. If I try to open that, uh, error will occur because we have not migrated it yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our migration. And like I said, the migration is uh, simply like uh, although we defined our our model and we defined our table with our columns, our name, and our email columns, we haven't really created the database yet. What we did was we just created the class to actually create the database and let the Rails do its thing. We want to, we want to run this um, uh, program right here. We want, I mean, we want to type in this. So here we go. The bundle A X E C rake D B you guys have the colon and migrate. Oops. Migrate. Then press enter. And there we go. Users created, migrate, created table for us. There it is right there. And now. Now let's go back and look at our um, what Rails created for us. Let's see, let's go back to here. Then we could go back and see our database. Okay. There it is. This is what the we created for us. Obviously, we can't read this. That's why we have the program. Uh, SQLite database browser to read it. Now if I go in ahead and try to open that program up, um, desktop, one, diamond, db, SQLite 3, open that up, and there we go. We have all our information. Um, here's our users table, and there's our name, and there's our email just as we specified up here when we first tried to design our website, name and email, name and email. Oh, the thing that uh, you might wonder is how come there's an ID field, create, created at field, and updated at field? Well, a SQL, I mean, um, uh, Rails did that for us. 
because uh, every time you're going to create a database, I mean, create a, a field for a user, an ID field is going to be created, created for it. And an ID field is simply a number that is unique. And it keeps on going down, down, down. Like, for instance, this would be number 0, number 1, number 2, and so on, and so on, and so on. And here's our created at field and our updated at field. So uh, there you go. Uh, that's the whole process. And uh, first what we did was we designed our database. We did this, Rails generate model. We created our, um, our um, class for us. And then we did bundle, execute, rake, db, migrate. And finally, it created, uh, it actually activated our uh, database. Uh, the next video, I might actually go in and add some, uh, some names to the uh, database so you can see what that looks like, too. But besides then, let me put this up for you so you have a great overview of what we did. And uh, besides then, uh, thank you for watching my video. Bye-bye.